Hello, a great welcome to this presentation. Here I will demonstrate the analysis of a strap footing using eTabs software. Let me first provide you a brief description on the strap footing. A strap footing essentially consists of two individual footings connected by a rigid beam known as a strap and hence the name strap footing. So a strap footing is used to connect either two eccentrically loaded column footings as shown in case 1 or to connect an eccentrically loaded column footing to an axially loaded column as shown in case 2. In both cases, the function of the strap is the same that is to transmit the moments across footings to ensure a uniform soil pressure below both footings. So look here, case 1, as you can see that both the column footings are subjected to an axial load as well as the moments. Here you can see that a stiff strap beam is provided to connect the both the footings. And the function of the strap he here is to uniformly distribute the moment effects across both footings and also to ensure as far as possible a uniform pressure distribution across both the footings. And if you find the interstitial structures, you will find that in many cases below a braced bay where you have provided either a diagonal bracing or a chevron bracing, a staff footing is provided in order that both the column footings act as a single unit. And here is case 2 wherein you will find that just because of its placement, the first footing is subjected to an eccentric load whereas the second one is subjected to only an axial load. So here the function of the strap is to distribute also the moment effects to the second footing so that we expect or we achieve a, as far as possible a uniform soil pressure distribution below each footing. So a strap footing may be used in place of a combined rectangular footing if the distance between the columns is large. Obviously, suppose that the distance between these two column footing is too large, we know that the combined footing action will not come into action and in such a case, a strap footing would be a better choice. The important requirement for a strap footing is that the strap, that is the, we are talking about the connecting beam, it must be rigid and it should not be in contact with the soil. So many textbooks or the journal papers provide guidelines regarding how the stiffness of the strap must be ensured. One important criteria that is set in one journal paper is the stiffness of the strap, the ratio of the stiffness of the strap to the stiffness of the footing. This must be greater than 2. As clearly shown over the sketches, you will find that the bottom of the strap it is kept out of contact with the soil so that there is no pressure transfer between the strap as well as the soil. Now let me take you to the problem statement. So the main objective of this presentation is to show you the response of a strap footing connecting two eccentrically loaded column footings using the eTabs software. The results that we will discuss essentially include the distribution of the soil bearing pressures as well as the deformations below footings. Now here is the problem that is analyzed. You can see that it consists of two footings of the same size. Length of the footing is L, width is B. And in each case you will find that the column is subjected to both an axial load as well as a moment. That is, both the footings are eccentric eccentrically loaded. And you will find that both the footings are connected by a rigid strap. Now let me provide you the parameters for the problem analyzed. The length of the footing is 3 meters, width B is 2 meters. The spacing between the two footings is S is equal to 6 meters. And in each case, the footing thickness is kept as 500 mm. And the strap is kept sufficiently rigid with a beam size of 300 by 800 mm. The applied column loads include, for the first footing, applied axial load is 200 kN and the moment is 200 kN meter. And the second case, you will find that the axial load is higher, that is 100 kN, but the moment is kept the same, 
that is 200 kN meter and this is the particular case of a strap beam footing that is provided just below a braced bay wherein you will find that one footing will be under a lower compression and the second one will be under a higher compression with the, both the column footings subjected to the same horizontal load and hence the same moment. So here is shown and the ETAPS model as you can see that it consists of the two footings and the footings are sufficiently meshed in order to provide or in order to arrive at uh, reliable results and here you can see that the two footings are connected by the strap beam and uh, the strap beam is kept in such a way that uh, 300 mm of the strap beam it projects above the footing top surface or in other words the bottom of the footing and the bottom of the strap are kept at the same level now let me take you to the ETAPS analysis tutorial with the, the explanation of the various parameters that is used for the modeling. Okay, fine. So this is the ETAPS model for the strap coating. So let me first take you to the various parameters that is used for the modeling. So obviously this will start from uh, the material properties. So as you can see that here I have defined a material known as a CONC, that's a concrete. So I can just show you the properties that is used. Here uh, the unit weight assigned is zero because I presume that the footing loads include uh, all the footing surfaces, and the E value for the concrete is taken as 25,000 MPa and um, that's all regarding uh, the material property definition. Now let me take you to the section definers that will provide the section properties for the columns for the strap beam as well as that uh, the thickness for the footing. So let us start with the frame section. So we'll uh, start uh, defining the section properties. So if you go to the frame sections, here you'll find that we have defined two properties. First one is a COL 500 by 500, that is for uh, the definition of the column property. So if you find the parameters, you'll find that uh, the material is a CONC and that uh, the dimension is a 500 by 500. Now on the other hand, if you go to the strap beam, you'll find that it's a beam of dimension 300 by 800. I'll show you the properties. So you'll find that it's the same uh, CONC beam which is property and the dimension of uh, the strap beam, that is the depth is 800 mm and the width is 300 mm. So that is regarding uh, the frame sections. Now let me take you to the section properties associated with the footing slabs. So we'll go for uh, directly to the section properties, go to the slab sections and here you, you'll find that I defined a property known as S500 wherein you'll find that um, the material property is a CONC and we have used a shell thick formulation for uh, the modeling of the footings and the thickness of the footing is plotted over here as 500 mm. So now, now we know that uh, uh, for this pr uh, problem or for all footing problems we need to simulate the soil through springs that's area springs which is defined through the important parameter modulus of subgrade reaction so let me take you to the definition of uh, the spring properties here we are talking about the area springs and here you'll find that i defined a property known as a ks springs so let me show you the springs here over here here uh, the modulus of subgrade reaction is defined through the springs as 40000 kN per meter cube and remember that this is basically is a nonlinear problem and accordingly all the area springs are specified as a compression only springs that is important so that any uplift of the foundation with the soil will be properly taken care in the analysis so and all the uh, loads are uh, applied that is the joint loads are applied here is a p1 with m1 and here is a p2 and, and m2 and I'll, let me take you to the important results the first one i would like to show you is the distribution of the soil pressures so let me take you to the plan view over here so the plan and in the plan uh, let me take you to the base apply okay so let me take uh, the for example uh, the display and in the display let me take you to the soil pressures so uh, apply okay so this is the distribution of the soil pressures which uh, i will take up it in detail in the uh, subsequent part of the presentation here for example if you uh, move your cursor over this uh, diagram you will find the distribution of the pressures so if you the values are displayed out over this left corner for example here it is of the order of say for example it is uh, near to say uh, zero that is a uh, minus three and here it is uh, of the order of say 40 
46 kilo per meter square and for this footing obviously we expect a larger loading and larger pressures and here the pressure as you can see that is of the order of 73 and on the right edge it has increased to 103.74 kilo per meter square so this is all regarding the distribution of uh, the uh, salt pressures now in order to show you the deformed shape let me take you to the elevation over here so i will select the elevation so let me just take you to the elevation part over here so elevation and uh, i will take you to the section 2 that will be better okay fine so this is a section that is taken through the strap beam now let me provide you the deformed shape so so if you, if i press over here so i want to show the, the displacements uh, that is used so if i apply it so here as you can see that uh, the deformed shape of uh, the strap footing system is shown over here as it um, would be explained in the subsequent presentation you will find that the deformed shape is an indicative of uh, how effectively the strap is uh, trying to hold the two footings uh, while deformation so um, i think that uh, these are the two important uh, behaviors or the response uh, that is introduced uh, through the strap action so now let me take you back to the uh, presentation slides okay fine so let us uh, start discussing the taps results so we will uh, discuss in particular about the soil pressures below both the footings so the distribution of the soil pressures under both footings connected by strap are shown below so for example this is footing f1 and this is footing f2 and as you can see that the pressures at the various corners are indicated over here so with the pressure on the left corners p1 and p4 being 0.8 and on the right corners it is 47.8 so that means the footing F1 is subject to a smaller pressure. And the important thing that we notice is that the pressure gradient, that's a difference in the pressure is too small. It's only 47 kilo per meter square. Now coming to footing F2, we know that F2 is subject to a larger compression. And obviously we expect a larger pressure also below it. And here you can see that the minimum pressure on the left edge is 70.3 and on the right side it is 103.6. And here again we find that the pressure gradient is hardly of the order of say 30 kilometer per meter square but the important function of the strap that is to keep the pressure below each footing as uniform that is not met here so the reason is very clear to us because a uniform pressure under each footing is expected only in the case of an infinitely stiff strap so here we find a smaller deviation that is it is not uniform though it is not uniform still we find that the pressure gradient is very small that means the size of the strap beam is sufficiently enough in order to ensure that the pressure gradient is smaller though we are not in a position to achieve almost a uniform distribution so we find that the small smaller soil pressure gradients under each footing simply indicates the triggering of the strap action that is provided so remember this is the footing f1 and this is the footing f2 and this is the beam connecting the two footings and these are the soil pressures under each of the footing of the st strap configuration so this is all regarding the distribution of the soil pressures now let me show you an interesting another interesting parameter that is the distribution of the deformation look here the deformed shape of the strap footing is shown over here so what important behavior we can expect over here here we find that the strap is rigid enough in order to take both footings to deform along a line or in other words the ability of the strap to connect the footings to act as a single unit is evident from the deformed shape so obviously normally we expect this kind of a deformation only when the only in the case of a combined footing only in the case of a rigid combined footing here even if the footings were separate as they were connected by a 
sufficiently rigid strap beam we were able to achieve a very good behavior through the deformed shape as shown here now in order to better understand how the soil pressure is getting modified under each footing let me just present you the distribution of soil pressure under each footing under the same load if there would have been no strap that means we will consider what would be the soil pressure distribution under each footing if they were not connected by a strap and that will obviously provide a sufficient insight on the action of the strap beam so that is what is provided over here look here here i have provided the soil pressure distribution under footing f1 if there is no strap look here here the pressure is very high 131.5 km per meter square on the other hand when there was strap what was the pressure let me just go back it is only 47.8 it's very less further more importantly if there was no strap we find that almost 50% of the footing lost contact that means with a contact length of only 1.5 meters and the pressure gradient is too steep that means over 1.5 meter we are having 131.5 km per meter square the same is the story for the other footing also here we find that the maximum pressure is 144 km per meter square whereas in the earlier case it was only hardly 103 km per meter square further we find that if there would have been no strap the pressure difference is of the order of say 120 km per meter square whereas here we find that it is hardly 30 km per meter square thus it highlights the essential action of a strap beam that means it tries to provide a uniform pressure distribution and even when there is no uniform pressure distribution a strap beam tries to keep the gradient of the soil pressures as small as possible that is evidenced here thus we get a very clear insight into the action of the strap beam that is it is effective number 1 in reducing the soil pressures under each footing by effectively distributing the load effects to both the footings thus we find that the main action of a strap is effectively distributing the load effects thereby it is not that individual footings will be affected both the footings will act as a single unit and thereby the pressures below each footing will be reduced and even this reduced pressures are uniformly distributed with a smaller pressure gradient thus we find that both structurally and and also from the point of view of efficiency a strap is a good choice but let me just provide you one more point a strap is not not normally preferred just because of one factor that is the framework costs and the labor costs and again depends upon the country for as uh, if we are talking about the european country and all obviously the cost of labor is very high whereas in india you will find that the cost of labor is smaller so whether to go for strap or not it will be decided both by the site consideration and also from the designers intent of keeping more structural efficiency into the foundation design so that's all regarding the strap footing so as usual please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and please let me know any comments from your side that will definitely improve my presentation so thanks a lot and have a nice day